Let's go. What's going on, everyone? Joe and Mike back from buildassetsonline.com. Today, we're going to be doing a reaction video. Uh, I searched dropshipping. I searched something into Google, into YouTube, and this video came up from Sarah Finance. I tried dropshipping for one week from scratch, and uh, I thought it was worth making a response to because this is the kind of thing that's popular on YouTube in the whole realm of dropshipping, e-commerce, stuff like that. So we're going to see today, is this content that YouTube likes to promote worth uh, worth its salt? And I have a feeling that um, it's not going to be, unfortunately. And of, and of course, nothing against this uh, young lady in particular. Um, we're only going to be attacking what she's presenting and not her. Or maybe we won't be attacking. Maybe we'll like it. But um, let's get right into the video. Any, anything else to say, Mike? Nope. I haven't seen the video. So, okay, we'll we're gonna put on two x speed here just for uh, for time. So let's go. Here we and I let's start from the beginning. Okay. For this video, I will be building a Shopify dropshipping business from scratch and test it out for an entire week. And I will be revealing literally everything from A to Z. And at the end of the video, I will show you guys how like much me. money the business makes. Hopefully, over ten thousand dollars. So first, I'm going to find a product to sell. Then I'm going to. All right. So Mike, first, were you able to catch all that? You know, my, my frame rate is a bit off, but the one thing I did catch was the little preview of her selling something for six ninety nine. So, yeah, I guess we yeah. we can keep that in mind for now. We'll keep that in mind. So the first thing I want to comment on is like this whole the whole concept of this, uh, the fact that she is like I tried drop shipping for one week. Like this is such a silly thing. If you're gonna be doing drop shipping. It's going to be something that you should dedicate a lot more of your time to than one week. It kind of reinforces this, oh, make money quick, get rich quick, try this, try that. Uh, it's it's really like a dumb mentality that I really hate. And I understand like these are types of videos that people like to watch, but I think it just reinforces such a bad, bad mentality when it comes to building an online business. Yeah, it's like making a video. I tried being a doctor for a week. I tried <laughs> being an engineer for a week. Yeah. Obviously – nonsense and you're right joe this idea enforces the mindset that what you're doing is just something like you get in you get out and so when you're faced with hardship like any person trying to do a, a sort of business is going to be they're just going to immediately jump ship because they're not even thinking about it as like a real thing so let's, let's keep going yeah to create an online store using shopify then i'm going to create advertisements and market the product and i'm going to walk you guys through the entire process Right, so today is day one and honestly my plan is to get everything done today and then have the store up and running for the whole week that way i can make the most amount of money also my budget for this is going to be a hundred dollars so i do not want to spend any more than a hundred dollars so now the first thing that i have to do and with any other business is finding a product to sell so in order for this to work and for me to actually make money the product has to fall under certain categories so i honestly would prefer if the product is in high demand solves some kind of problem can't easily be found at walmart and also has that wow factor so if people see the product they instantly want to buy it and you probably so what do we think of these core principles uh that she's saying uh, she a high demand wow factor not sold at walmart are these really good foundational principles that you should be using when you're building a dropshipping store? I I think not. Well, let's see how it works out for her. All right, so should we just keep going? Yeah. Lastly, I'll say we sell stuff that Walmart sells all the time, and Walmart Walmart is they're like nothing. <laughs> they're Deep like you they're like nothing. They're easy easy to beat Walmart. <laughs> Right. Easy. I have seen how people find products to sell, and there honestly is so many ways you can do this, but I've decided to use TikTok to find the product. So TikTok is one of the largest social media platforms, and I think that everyone should be using TikTok for their dropshipping businesses because it has personally helped me a lot. So everyone should be using TikTok for their dropshipping businesses. Think about the demographic of TikTok here. The TikTok demographic is all young kids, besides for the large influencers on it. Very few of them have real money to spend. So building your whole business off of the back of TikTok, advertising to a bunch of people with very limited funds, uh, you know, probably not the best idea trying to get them to buy impulse things with wow factor. Um, you know, really, really bad foundation for your business. You know what, though? I actually disagree there. Uh, I haven't take, taken a look at the actual demographics of TikTok, but nowadays it's really not just young people and – you know, obviously my, my uh, girlfriend's on TikTok all the time. And so I see what's actually on there and the, the media, the way that it is that like you can promote products on TikTok is actually way better than Facebook. Like the Facebook 
low ticket drop shipping ads that I've seen are absolute garbage compared to the way that you can promote something on TikTok. And I think it is a really good way to uh, to promote stuff. I see people selling like RVs on there. People sell land on there. Um, Luke Smith, the role of vacant land actually does really, really well on TikTok. Even Landio does really well on TikTok. So I actually, I think there is space for product promotion on TikTok, but it's going to be, you know, it's, if you can get something to go viral, it, you can make it huge and then it'll die out with the algorithm. So we'll, oh. we'll, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll see what this interesting, interesting. But yeah, let's keep that in mind is that even if she is successful, the odds of going huge and then dying out or getting a mediocre, mediocre result and then dying out, uh, very, very poor foundations for a business. I We like to focus on things that are sustainable month after month after yeah. month. So let's where is look. TikTok going to be in three years? Where is TikTok going to be in five years? So I don't think there's anything wrong with capitalizing on TikTok as a branch of marketing. But again, it's just not – you're not going to create income for the rest, you know, for 50 years for you know, your generational wealth through TikTok most likely. All right. Let's, let's, let's keep going. But some, uh, some fair points, Mike. The technique that I use to find winning products on TikTok is just search up Amazon finds, scroll through all the posts, and any video that has a lot of likes and comments is a product that I might test out. So now I'm going to go ahead and do this and try to find a good product to sell. And once I do, I will come back and update you guys. All right, guys. So I'm back and it only took me 20 minutes to find a product, but I honestly think this product is going to sell really well. So the product is soap sheets and I've actually seen this product a lot, but for some reason I never actually thought about selling it. And we can agree that based off of TikTok, it's in demand. It also has that wow factor when you see it. And I don't think you can easily find this at stores like Walmart. So for all those reasons, I'm going to go with this product. And I used to use AliExpress, but the problem I used to have is that shipping took way too long. So instead of using AliExpress, I switched over to S Pocket, which is so much better. And if you look at S Pocket, you can see that the soap sheets are available here and they're only 225, which is actually pretty good. So if I can get the product for 225, I can probably sell it on my store for about 699. All right, so All right, so she's going to get soap sheets from Spocket.com, which seemed to ship in four to seven days, it said on her screen, um, and she's gonna sell. They're gonna she's gonna buy them for like two fifty or so and sell them for six ninety nine. Um, not good. Let's let's just say that. What do you think, Mike? Well, S Pocket is this in the U.S. Drop shipping suppliers from U.S., EU, Canada, Australia, and more. So, Joe, maybe maybe we're um. We're losing it here. They're, AliExpress is going out the window. They're finding the U.S. suppliers. They yeah. finally, they finally have an answer for all the the smack we've been talking. But you know what? Six ninety nine. That's all I have to say. Yeah. So say she makes uh, you know three dollars per sale. If she wants to make three thousand dollars per month, she has to sell a thousand per month. A thousand. Whereas we make that in one or two sales most of the time when we're selling when we're drop shipping high ticket products, so it's really insane um, the, when you start to think about the numbers of the business that she's she's going to attempt. So yeah, and if you want to if you want to sell a thousand or something, two thousand, three thousand units, yeah, it has to be in huge demand. You can't get it anywhere else. It has to solve a need. But guess what? If you want to sell one thing that makes a thousand dollars profit, I don't care about any of those. I don't care if Walmart sells it, Wayfair sells it, your mother sells it. It's easy to get one customer. It is extremely hard to get a thousand customers. Yeah, yeah. I already found a product to sell, and next I want to get an influencer to advertise the product for me. And no, I'm not going to be using Facebook ads because it's going to take me too long, and so I'd rather use an influencer. And also, since I use TikTok to find a product, I'm also going to be using a TikTok influencer to advertise the product. So honestly, I'm not going to be too picky with the person as long as I have over 150,000 followers and get over 20,000 views on each video. And I guess the most important thing is they do have to have a loyal fan base and a lot of comments. So actually, what I think I'm going to do is search up Amazon finds and then go through that and see who posts a bunch of those videos, and then go on their profile, kind of look into it, see how many followers they have, how many views they get on each video, and if I think they're going to be a good fit, then I will email them. And an important thing I forgot to mention is that I am going to reach out to 40 people, and the reason for this is because people usually take a really long time to reply, and so if I reach out to 40, I'll be lucky to maybe have five people respond. All right, guys. So she's going to look on Amazon finds, whatever that hashtag is on TikTok, and she's going to find people with a decent amount of followers on there and basically reach out to 40 of them and send them something, whatever she's going to be selling, send them a video to promote. Um, now, I don't like this strategy because what do you do? Like, again, I keep saying the foundation for what you're doing. Once you reach out to those 40 followers and say she's maybe five of them will respond, those five do respond, they post it once, then what? Then you're dead in the water. You and, know, our, our cousin Jared had this issue when he had his yoga website. He was doing strictly influencer marketing and it actually worked. But you quickly run dry with influencers. So 
Um, yeah, it's not it's not sustainable long term for sure. But also, I think she has a bit of a, an advantage because she's going to be contacting people, and she already has clout with her name, with her her brands already. So, I think she would get a much higher response rate than just Joe Schmo emailing a bunch of TikTok influencers saying, "Hey, can you promote my soap sheets?" Yeah. To be fair, I don't know like how she emailed them. I don't know if she emailed them like as herself, but wait. Maybe she'll post that if she emailed them anonymously or not. But if she's emailing them from Sarah Fines or, or fi- Sarah Finance, whatever, then yeah, she has an advantage by having a name. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you there. But I think you know the main the main issue is that you're not basically, you know, if you were going to try and heart, you're not planting a bunch of seeds that are going to grow later down the line and keep growing and keep growing and keep growing. You're basically just going out to the field and you're you're ripping the plant out at the root and seeing what you can extract from that one <laughs> from that one that one harvest rather than preparing for years and years of, of harvesting. So let's... I, w- I would like it more so to go into someone else's tree and say, hey, can I can I pick one of these? Can I pick one of these? Going to you know someone else's, hey, can I pick one of these? You're not gonna you're not gonna feed your family for life doing that. Yeah, well said. I'm finally done and it took me two hours to reach out to all the influencers. So what I did is either just email them or DM them on Instagram. So now what I've done is I found a product to sell, I've reached out to influencers, and the next thing I need to do is actually build the online store using Shopify. So I actually have a separate video on how to build a Shopify dropshipping store, but for this video I am gonna go over some tips. Alright, so I just finished making the store and no joke, it only took me about 40 minutes to make it. But anyways, I'll show you guys how the store looks real quick. Alright, so here's the homepage, and honestly it doesn't look that good, but it doesn't matter because the customers are going to be redirected to the product page. So let's go to the product page and on here, as long as you have good images, a good description, and reviews on the site, you should be okay. And one thing I want to mention is I did add the buy to get two dollars off. And the reason I do this for all my stores is because when people see that, they will be inclined to buy more products. And if you want you can use the app vitals 40 to do this but anyways that's the store it looks pretty decent so now i'm actually gonna go over some apps that i use for the store so the first one i use is s pocket and this is where i get my product from and once you create an account with s pocket it's super simple to use and all you have to do is basically search up the product that you want and you should be able to find it then once you click on the product you click on add to import list then you want to click on import list and here you just have to click on yeah so what she's doing is i mean her store whatever so one thing one interesting thing i want to point out is that she's obviously going for people to buy more in bulk like buy two get two free or whatever she said which is really what you would have to do for something like this if you want to generate any sort of decent income. So uh, I guess that's good. And um, so we didn't we didn't know this because we don't do this type of drop shipping, um, which we've talked about time and time again. But I guess this S pocket thing is kind of like Oberlo, like the AliExpress thing, rather than instead of importing from Oberlo, you import um, with with S pocket to your drop shipping store. But again, there's no the problem with this which we've talked about. It's the same with AliExpress. There's no barrier to entry. Yeah. And anyone can just go and say, hey, I'm going to import this necklace from S Pocket. Like, you can have 30 people doing that at the same time. And especially with this, um, you know, with this culture, everyone pushing the next trending hot product to sell. It's just everyone fighting from for scraps uh, from the table. Yeah, you have no brand name. You have no brand recognition. I think influencer marketing is really the only way to make this work because you're actually tapping into other people's brand power for your nameless product. Yeah. So let's let's keep watching. Push the store and this will send the product to your store. And like I said before, I really like S Pocket. It's much better quality products than AliExpress and also faster shipping. So if you guys do want to try them out, I linked S Pocket in the description and you can go through that link and try it out for free. All right. So another app I want to go over is one click ecom and I basically use Oh, she has an affiliate link uh, it looks like for S Pocket. So that's uh that's pretty clever. I mean, no nothing against her for that, but um you know, it's interesting how this works where I think with a lot of this stuff and I don't know in her situation specifically, you know, since so much of this type of drop shipping is revenue heavy and, you know, a lot of people, well, they'll show these amazing screenshots of tons of revenue. I wonder if someone uses her S pocket affiliate link and gets like a hundred thousand in revenue with zero profit because they wasted all their money on ads or whatever, like how much, you know, she gets back. Interesting. Interesting thought. Yeah. Yeah. Let's let's keep going. Oops. Use this for all my stores. So this app is great for finding winning products. And as you can see here on the app, you can easily add the product to your store and there's a large selection of winning products to choose from. And also, if you want to create Facebook ads, then you can do it through this. So all you have to do is click on settings and then set it all up from there. And it'll basically walk you through the process so you can launch your Facebook ads and it makes it pretty simple. All right, so another app I want to also go over is called Luke's and this is one of the biggest review apps on Shopify. So basically, its purpose is to add photo reviews to your store, which is really important. And honestly, think of it like this. If you're going to buy a product, you obviously want to go through the reviews to make sure it's good. And if you guys do want to check them out for free, I did link it in the description of the video. But anyways, those are really all the tips I have for you guys and these are some of my favorite apps that I use for all my dropshipping stores. All right, so now that the store is all done, I need to create an advertisement 
content to market the product. And usually what I do is outsource this because I don't have the time to do it. But because this is going to be a TikTok, it kind of has to be in a different format. So what I decided to do is get the original TikTok video and then edit it in InShot. And then I'm just going to get the influencer to post that. Now, obviously, this isn't my video, so I am going to have to credit the person, but I don't really think it's a big deal. So I went ahead and edited the video. And so that's interesting. And we knew that we the people that we knew that were trying this type of dropshipping before, they were basically like stealing a lot of other people's videos, editing them, and that was becoming the advertisement for the product. She says she doesn't think it's a big deal, but I just, you know, I, I, I disagree. I think you're setting yourself up for, I mean, I guess the odds are low, but yeah. anyone could come after anyone for anything. And if you're just stealing someone's video, especially for a commercial purpose, I don't know. I don't think it's good. Yeah, I don't have too much opinion about it, but how long is it going to last? You're going to just steal people's videos forever? She, she said she usually makes them herself, and I guess if you were doing it more long term, you could send the stuff to the, the TikTok influencers, but I don't know. Yeah, again, just just a really, I think a really poor foundational thing. You know, everyone's after that quick, that quick dollar, like, let me just take someone else's video, edit it real quick, send it out. But you're right. You know how long is how long is that gonna last? Like it's just poor foundations. Let's keep watching. And I'm gonna show you guys how it looks. All right, guys. So now everything on my end is done. So what I've done so far is found a product. I built a store. I reached out to influencers, and I created an advertisement to market the product. So now I basically just have to play the waiting game because I do need to wait for an influencer to email me back. So once that happens, I'll wait for them to post the video, and then I can start making money. But anyways, my plan is to now end off the video, and then at the end of the week, I'm gonna touch base with you guys and then show you how much money the dropshipping store made. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. What's up, guys? So now it's been seven days and everything is done. So now I'm going to share the results with you guys and also tell you how much money I ended up making. But before I tell you guys how much money the business made, I do want to tell you what ended up happening with the influencers. So I told you guys I reached out to 40 people, and out of 40 people, only two people actually responded. It honestly sucks, but that's usually how it goes. But the person I actually ended up going with was pretty good. She had over 200,000 followers. Her followers were pretty loyal. And she. All right, let's just take note of this 200,000 followers, and let's see what her sales are. This, this one out of two pe person that promoted her stuff. I used to also post girly things, which is also a plus. But a good thing was she only charged me 60 Canadian dollars and that's only 40 US dollars. But unfortunately the video was only up for two days and that's because she didn't answer pretty late. But I was honestly shocked with the results because the video did do really well. It got over 200,000 views. And it was one of her best performing videos. Now with- All right, she said it did really well. I just want to comment on this. 200,000 views. Who cares about that? Everyone is so focused on these vanity metrics of I got this many views, I got this many likes. It, it literally means nothing. It literally means nothing. Same, and it's not just, it's not just people in this world. It's in the SEO world as well. I got a million page views, but how much money did you make? It means nothing. So again, just a quick lesson not to, not to think about these vanity metrics um, as something that is actually meaningful. 200,000 views, you might have thought I could have made maybe 500 to 1,000 dollars. Well, I didn't actually make that much, which is pretty disappointing, but I am so happy with the results because I was profitable. So real quick, here is the TikTok analytics. I got her to send me a picture of that. And also here is the results from the store. So I ended up making $211 in just two days. And I will say that is pretty decent, but I honestly wish Wait. it was more. At 60, what? <laughs> I, thought, I thought it was 68,000. No, $68. Um, the, the, it being like in thousands. But, <laughs> but well, you're too used to that, Mike. You're too used, you're too used to seeing the. Yeah, my, my, my brain got confused for a second. So, so she made no money. Okay. Yes. You know. So her total sales after this whole thing were $211.66. And you know what's kind of funny, Mike? I think back to the days when we first started dropshipping. Um, and the first dropshipping course we ever bought um, was, was actually a screenshot that was kind of similar to this. Like it wasn't that low, but I it was, was – I was telling um, Jared and Mike Lopez about this on when I went on the More Than Money podcast. Oh, uh, yeah. It was like – it was 90 days and it was 12,000 in sales. I bet that we were all laughing at, that, at how that, ridiculous yeah. it was that like made anything of that. Yeah. So this is eight days of her time, um, you know, and she made 211 in sales. Let's see how much profit she made. She does so. reveal that, but still like she, let's think about what happened here. She planted zero seeds. So nothing she did is going to have any cumulative returns. Okay, so she basically worked an hourly wage. She may as well go work at McDonald's instead of doing this. Seriously, yeah. that's what it what that's what it comes down to. I agree. I'm not. Yeah, that's not even a joke. Yeah, maybe McDonald's probably pays too much with the with all these minimum wage uh, laws. <laughs> <laughs> may as well go like I don't. This I don't is, know. 
I don't know what the profit's going to be, but it's probably one shift at McDonald's. Yeah, so let's let's keep watching. Now, obviously, this is not all profits, so I do want to go over the expenses with you guys. So the first expense is $40 for the TikTok influencer. Second expense is $14 for the Shopify domain. Next expense is $10 for the Shopify and PayPal fees. And the last expense is $67 for the product cost. So in total, the profit was around $80. And honestly, that's pretty good because that's about 40% profit margin. Now, I honestly was expecting a little... Uh, all right. So she made $80 when she tried Shopify dropshipping from, from one week for, from scratch. I lied, Joe. It's less than a, than a shift at McDonald's. At least you're making 15 bucks an hour. You work eight hours. Yeah. What is that? That's uh, 100 something, 120. <laughs> yeah. And let's not mention like what happens with most people when they make money this way with dropshipping. So we've, we've, we've covered this time and time again. If you go look at our, like our Shopify exchange uh, review video where we look at dropshipping stores that are being sold on the Shopify exchange, y you see what happens. They, they do stuff like this. They get a bunch of revenue. And then what happens is they'll like spend a lot of that revenue advertising again and it goes flat. So that's what's going to happen if say someone doesn't know what they're doing. They did this. They made 80 bucks. They're going to go waste that 80 bucks again or waste more time trying to get more influencers. And it's just, it's just going to be a total disaster. Yeah. I didn't like this. <laughs> yeah. I didn't like this because this video was disheartening for people that may – be interested in drop shipping. And so for a lot of people, this may be like their first touch point with this idea of making money online through Shopify or through drop shipping. And this is just not it. This is just not what we do. This is not how to build a business that you can sell. This is a showcase on how to actually not do drop shipping because she surely wasted many hours of her time. And she made 80 bucks. And so it's not it's not a repeatable process. She got 200,000 views on her video and she got 19 sales. What kind of conversion <laughs> rate is that, Joe? 10% would be 20,000. 100% would be 2,000. 0.1% would be 1,000. I'm, I'm losing track, but it's somewhere in the 0. 0.001 range in terms of conversion rate, yeah. which is uh, – lackluster yeah and i don't think this pr i don't know much about her i don't think she actually cares about drop shipping <laughs> like to be honest with you i'm sure no, she makes way more well stuff, yeah yeah she clearly makes way more money off youtube you know good for her but let's look at some of these comments mike because so someone comments tactics learned use tiktok for product research use tiktok influencers use s pocket other than aliexpress use the buy more save more on your store no other guru is teaching this thank you flame Go to the replies. Glad no more of the gurus are because it doesn't even – it didn't work. Yeah. So everyone everyone is praising this, but nothing – what happened? Nothing happened. She didn't, she didn't build an income stream. She made 80 bucks. Go shovel snow. <laughs> go, mow, go mow a lawn. I don't know. What happened in the good old days, Joe? Back in the, you know, back in my day, you want to go make some money. You knock on some doors, you pull a couple weeds, you shovel some snow, boom, you make eighty bucks. Yeah. Nowadays, these kids, they you think know, they can just do everything on TikTok. You know what's funny is I was gonna say a better thing to do than this would be to go wait tables, but in the new normal, um, we don't know about that. However, I feel like like. Del being a, like a pizza delivery driver like i was making way more money than this when i was delivering pizza like i would get oh, yeah. like like ten dollar tips just in like a you know within like a few of those within an hour and then it's like a four or five hour shift and i didn't have to spend eight days waiting to make 80 bucks so i mean let's just we've been like ragging on this mike what should people do instead like if you can if we can break it down into like like a quick, we're not going to go into a whole lesson here, but what's wrong with this and what should people do instead? Is that, that's really what we should deliver here. The problem is that she's doing something that, like you've said many times, Joe, it has no foundation. If you're trying to actually build an online business that is going to make you money for not just a week, but not just a month, not just a year, but for the foreseeable future and have it be something that you can sell you know, like these big uh, 
social media companies do, like you know these big uh, startups do, then you have to build something that's sustainable, and you have to build something where you get compounding results, your skill set compounds, and that way when you sell your business, you can go and just make another one. And that's how you actually create momentum in your life and you create momentum in your financial situation. Absolutely. And um, you can watch you know, some of our other videos and podcasts to, to learn more about this. But I think the problem with this is that you have to be so proactive with your marketing when you're doing any sort of influencer or social media marketing rather than focusing on search engine marketing. When you focus on search engine marketing the way we do, the traffic – comes to us like we literally besides for like setting stuff up and you know maybe pointing a few things in the right direction our our marketing is on autopilot and we get the most relevant customers because people are searching for the exact stuff we're selling so i think that's really the core of what the issue is with all of this and it's not to say that you cannot make money off of social media marketing because obviously you can but for someone that's new, for someone that's just starting out, I think it's the worst possible foundation for building up a solid income stream that you can rely on. And that's the key is that you cannot rely on it because you saw, you know, she's doing all this work and one, one, two, two influencers answered. Whereas if she would have spent some time setting up her Google ads, not that she should advertise this product on Google ads, but she sets it up next month. She goes in, she tweaks it a little bit. Month after that, she goes in and tweaks it a bit. It's a, it's, it's a process of continuous improvement rather than just – I don't even know like a good word to describe this. But like we've, yeah. given, we've given so many metaphors. I think it's a, it's a dead horse. So, but that's all I got to say. <laughs> yeah. I, was, I just wanted to say I think it's funny how social media marketing is portrayed as like this really quick way to make money when in fact social media marketing is actually – the most long-term play if you look at people that actually do it right because what they're doing is they're interacting on social media just time in and time out and they're building up this organic following and creating brand demand slowly over time so just like this person she's going to make money off this video because she has the s pocket affiliate link she's going to make money off the ads and she's consistently building and building and building her following that way when she does something she can go and make money off of that so those are the real people making money on social media. The people that are trying to just tap in for one minute and go viral and then think they've made their fortune, it's not going to happen. Right. And you know what, Mike? Even the people that are advertising, even the people that are advertising successfully on social media, if you look at someone like Alex Becker, if you look at someone like Ezra Firestone, two kind of completely different people, but they are doing the most long-term thing possible. They spend money to get you like to view their initial videos. Then they spend tons of money on retargeting. And it's just a whole funnel that they're advertising you through, you know, and it's a long process. It is by no means an instant or make money quick process like like people think it is. Like Ezra's got a whole complex funnel of how he gets people in their first video where the, you know it's like an engagement ad and they have to watch a whole a certain amount of it. Then they get retargeted with this, and it's a whole thing that takes place over the course of many many months, and even even years of retargeting and trying to re-engage customers. It's an insanely long process, insanely long. Yeah, you, you have to build trust in order to make social media work well, and that's the point of using social media is that if you're consistently engaging. And people come to know you, they come to trust you, and then they'll buy from you. Whereas if you're using query-based marketing, which is, like you said, Joe, things on Google that people are searching for. So um, like Lazy Boy Sofa, for example. If you were able to sell Lazy Boy Sofas, even though you're Joe Schmo, no one knows who you are, they know who Lazy, Lazy Boy is, they know what the sofa is, they know what it looks like, and so they're already looking to buy it. They've already have, they already have trust for the brand, and so it's much easier just to be a retailer for that brand and have it be something that is high ticket so you make a good amount of profit on it. That way you only need to make a couple sales per week, however you want to do it, in order to make a decent chunk of change in this world. Yes. And to add to that, Mike, I actually think that the mentality of a customer who finds you through a search is way different than someone who's advertising to you on social media. And I mean yep. that that's pretty obvious to me. Like when we make like ads for build assets online – like we get so many like negative comments and, and things like that because people are engaging with an ad. Like, why are you advertising to me? So 
Yeah, we have no yeah, trust no one's them. clicking on our products and then calling our stores and being like, why are you on Google? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they find us. They seek out us. They click us. So, yeah, yeah you're right. Even with Build Assets Online, like, oh, I found you guys on Spotify. Like, I love, I love the podcast. Like, it's just – that's just the nature of the beast. Yes. So, I don't know. Anyway, it's been a long – I don't know how we made this into 30 minutes, but there always seems to be like there's so much to say. I don't know how to condense it down, but that's about it. You say what's got to be said. So thank you guys for watching. Build that, Check out the free course, Online Asset Playbook, buildassetsonline.com slash playbook. And, uh, you know, learn the right way to uh, start making a full-time income online. Take it easy.